Hello, welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be looking at the second uh, handmade pen that I picked up at the DC Pen Show. I have the large Buddha holding it because it is a large pen. And this is a pen that's done by Jim Hines. He pours his own acrylics, designs his own pens, and he has a nice interesting approach. I appreciate some of the stuff that he's done. You know, I was first introduced to this through uh, our fellow reviewer down in Texas. And I think he did a good job of presenting it. But when I visited Jim's table after I uh, allowed him to show me the pens he was really happiest about when he got to this one, I said, that's the one I like. It's a nice little sticker also that you can get from Jim. So part of the reason why I enjoy the going to pen shows is finding a pen like this because I wouldn't have normally seen this or, or, or looked at it. And it's called Elemental by uh, when I talked to Jim and asked him what the model was called. So let's give uh, the Buddha a rest and let's take a look at this pen in a little more detail. Hopefully the sun and everything is allowing you to really appreciate that creamsicle look as David called it and also yesterday was creamsicle day at least that's what Trevor Noah said on the Daily Show. Let's go. I'm hungry. So I really enjoy seeing this in sunlight seeing how the different angles of the sunlight bring out the nice nuances in this creamsicle orange and white swirly design. This ebonite band is just a very, very good aesthetic touch in, in my view. You know, just a classic finial here at the top, a slightly camfered the bottom uh, you'll notice there's a, a plug and that's uh, as a result of the pouring and machining action because of the length of this pen. Um, originally uh, I didn't quite enjoy it but I think if you put it in perspective with the other black accents it, it fits in. It's about two turns to uncap it and it fits very well in the hand without posting and this is definitely a pen I would not post unless I needed to do something with the cap or was in an environment where I couldn't place the cap securely someplace then obviously putting it at the back of the barrel would, would be good. I like what Jim has done in the nib. That's yeah, a medium. I didn't discuss with him um, changing out nibs or putting a different nib in here. Um, I would not grind this black nib for various reasons. And you can see that Yovo scroll work, scroll work around that. And a very interesting logo. In this section, this ebonite section just feels great. Uh, it has just the right amount of uh, texture to it and feel to it, and it's temperature neutral, neither hot nor cold. There is a pretty good step up here, but that's a fairly long distance uh, from the nib, and you certainly wouldn't want to hold it there. It, it's definitely on the sharp side, but if you want to go above that, then you could do that and hold it up on the barrel. I think this is about as large a section size as I'm comfortable with. We'll give you those dimensions. So overall, uh, I just find this to be a very interesting, unique pen. I really enjoy the color. And, and like the green one I got from uh, Carolina Pens, you know, you can get some phenomenal acrylics at Jim Pores, and, and I'm certain on Larry's channel you've seen some of those, and, and other people have had them. And I was in the mood for something just exactly like this when I was uh, looking for pens at the DC show. So this isn't green but orange is my second color because I really don't have many orange pens. It's an underutilized color I think in the pen world. The first thing to look at the elemental is it's a big pen. 
It's a long pen. It's a girthy pen. Yeah, it makes the M800 look small. And you notice the M800, the Lamy All-Star, and the Pen BBS 309 are all almost exactly the same length. So Jim, I think, is uh, known for making larger pens. He also makes a series of pens that are smaller for those that um, would like something a little bit smaller in the hand. If we take a look at a measuring device, you can see it's over six inches capped. So that makes it, to me, in the oversized category. Posted, this pen even takes on a much larger size. I'd have to say it's the largest posted pen I've ever used. It's a screw-on cap, so it's very, very secure. And let's bring out our wonderful ruler. As you can see, it's seven and a half inches posted, which makes it very much on the supersized level. As we focus in on the nib and section, to me, one of the other very uh, nice design attributes that Jim does to his pens, which I really appreciate. This is an ebonite section, and to me that was what made this pen a pen that I really uh, wanted to own. Feels great. He also uses colored nibs. This is a black one, which goes well with this design. He also has purples and other colors. He buys them from FP Nibs, uh, the wonderful gentleman in Spain, who has a good YouTube channel, which is underviewed. And then uh, laser engraves his logo into it. That section still is on the large size, especially even compared to the M800, which is not considered a, a small pen. To me, the 309 is a real standard size section. And I put the Lamy all star in here with that Lamy section because a lot of people do write with that pen so I just wanted to use that as a perspective and to uh, say and show how big that section really is. So I really need my roll stop. So now we're going to put nib to paper. Yeah, I guess a little over two turns to take that cap off. And it just fits well in the hand. And you'd have to enjoy larger pens, to, I think, to really appreciate uh, this design. So you may ask what ink I'm using. Papier Plume Bootlegger Scarlet Letter. This is from Ink Journal's table. Uh, exclusive for the DC show, or at least that's what I have a recollection of. It's a really dark red, and, and I enjoy it. I don't really have a color in this nature, but the Scarlet, the Frankly Scarlet from Robert Oster is close, and when I get around to doing a review on these inks, we'll see how close they are. So the first thing that comes across with this nib is it's very smooth. Trouble with pronunciations and words, so I've been calling this pen Elemental, so I went and checked my notes, which I should have done before I did the video. According to Jim, it's Elementar. So I apologize up front, and I'll put in as many disclaimers as I can. Then these little skips up here are from me trying to get the pen on the paper properly. I write with looking through the viewfinder, not looking at the pen on paper, so that creates a little challenge. So I enjoy writing with this pen, and, and I've uh, been uh, showing this to other people, and when everybody picks it up and writes with it, they all come back saying, ooh, nice nib.
You know, not something I always get from a black nib like this. My uh, Stipula Passporto had a nice black nib. Um, other pens I've had black nibs on have not been as good. So one thing that I like is a smear test, which uh, Wasky Squirrel likes to do. Yeah, this is a medium wet pen, a medium wet ink. A very dark red color. It's easy to lay down a patch of ink. This nib is extremely easy to use. And for those that like to just pick up a pen and write, this pen certainly would, would meet that criteria. So, how would we rank this pen? I've actually called it rating, so let's uh, use the proper term. I'm going to give it a 9.1. So to me, I have to consider how much this pen might be appreciated by others, and maybe others might find it not quite to their liking. So I think for what this pen is, it's an excellent example of a nice hand-turned pen, a great use of materials, colors, the fact that Mr. Hines pours his own resins. I mean, all of those things add to it. It's a classic cartridge converter. You know, every every pen with a German nib, you know, you got your Franklin Christophs, your Edisons, uh, you know, uh, Carolina pens, etc. They're all going to have a standard German type converter here, also Keras Customs. So that's not going to change. And, and the nibs are either uh, Bacher or Yovo. I, uh, somebody said I needed to pronounce it differently, but I'll do my best. It's not something I retain, and I haven't heard many other people uh, use the name of the nib enough for it to sink in. So, is this a pen for you? To me, if you ever have an opportunity to look at what Mr. Hines has created, I certainly encourage you to do that. I will almost guarantee that you'll fall in love with at least one pen, or maybe more. So, be prepared for that. Um, talk to him about everything. He'll make custom pens for you. So if you have a favorite color or combination, that certainly would be good to reach out to him. I mean, he's a small enough pen maker that he can do that. Maybe if he becomes more popular and more people demand his products, he may not be able to do that, but at least take advantage of it if you want to now. So thank you for watching. We've reached the end of the video. So you notice I'm holding it up, up here and it, it's comfortable. And a lot of that has to do, if I was writing regularly, I would probably be holding it uh, more, more in the section, closer to the nib. So may you have many extraordinary, extremely satisfying uh, pen experiences, putting nib to paper, enjoying the blank piece of paper now becoming a work of art or a nice essay on topics that you find of interest or just seeing your thoughts written on paper. So I encourage everybody to, to enjoy that experience and hopefully with a pen that you're in love with. So bye for now. Until the next video, have a great day.